Hi everyone, my name is uh, Mobin Yahyazad Jalodar and I'm a third year PhD student at Stanford. Today I'm going to be talking about decentralized matching in a probabilistic environment. And this is a joint work with Irene, Tristan, and I mean at Stanford. In today's presentation, we'll be talking about online platforms where agents are long lived, match repeatedly, and have heterogeneous, probabilistic, but persistent preferences. Examples of such platforms are matching PhD students to their advisors, matching kids to childcare or nannies, or matching dogs to dog walkers. Let me define such platforms more formally as follows. We have a set of purchases V that represents agents. This can represent PhD students and advisors. We have a set of rounds T. This can be the quarters in an academic year. And for each pair of agents I and J, we have a compatibility probability PIJ that once we match agent I to agent J, this match will be successful with probability PIJ and unsuccessful otherwise. We assume compatibilities persist over rounds. So if you match a PhD student to an advisor and it doesn't work out, it's not going to work out in the future either. And we also assume compatibilities are independent across pairs. Note that the input graph that we're considering is not necessarily bipartite. And for now, in our base model, we assume capacity of agents is one. We'll later generalize this model and explain it. But in every round, the platform can select a matching and observe whether edges selected in that matching are successful or not. The reward in each round is the number of successful edges selected in that round. And depending on the platform, the total reward might be different. We may only care about successful matches found by the end of the process. For example, when matching PhD students to advisors which we only care about whether every PhD student is matched by the end of the year. Or on the other hand, sometimes matches made earlier in the process are more valuable, such as kidney exchange. We might also care about the total number of transactions over all rounds. For example, a dog walking platform might be paid per transaction and care about the number of times a dog is matched to a dog walker. All these rewards can be captured by finding an algorithm that maximizes the platform's weighted reward over all rounds. For example, if we care about total matches enabled by the system, we can capture this by setting all these weights equal to one. In this presentation, we will compare centralized and decentralized algorithms. In a centralized algorithm, an online algorithm decides centrally for everyone how to match, and the goal is to maximize the total weighted reward. On the other hand, in a decentralized algorithm, agents find their own matches in a decentralized manner and try to maximize their own successful matches. As a benchmark for centralized algorithm, we consider the centralized optimum online algorithm that adaptively <clears throat> selects a matching in each round using information learned from previous rounds. We call this algorithm opt. In the paper, we show that computing is NPR. The centralized algorithm we propose is the following polynomial time stable matching algorithm, or SM for short. Let's assume the compatibility graph is bipartite for now. Intuitively, in every round, stable matching does as follows. It commits to match successful pairs that it has found in previous rounds and runs deferred acceptance among unmatched agent agents to find a matching and select it. We assume preferences are formed based on the compatibility probabilities. That is, an agent prefers people with whom he has a higher probability of being compatible. This process is equivalent to greedily matching the edges with the highest compatibility probability. And we extend and formalize this intuition for general graphs in our paper. In the main results today, we show the expected reward of stable matching is a 0.316 approx of expected reward of optimal. Another natural algorithm that comes to mind is the greedy commit. That is, in each round, commit to match successful pairs found in previous rounds and select a max weight matching among unmatched agents. This is a centralized algorithm since a centralized platform is deciding for everyone which is the max weight matching. 
Our same analysis can be used to show that greedy commit is a 0.42 approx of expected reward of optimum. This result improves the previously known 0.25 approx result shown by Chen et al. in the query commit setting. In the existing literature, the most similar setting to our model is query commit, where you query edges in a sequence, so you have to commit to successful edges, and matched agent <coughs> edges must form a matching. There is also a vast body of work on online stochastic matching, where vertices on one side of a graph arrive online. Another somewhat similar setting is the multi arm bandit in the bipartite graphs, where rewards are stochastic and the platform learns a desirable matching over time. For the remainder of this talk, I'm going to talk about the proof of theorem one. We'll first show a weaker version of the theorem that gives us the intuition that we need for the proof, which we show that the expected reward of stable matching is a one fourth approx of the expected reward of optimum. The proof idea is as follows. We show a stronger argument proving the one fourth approx on a round by round basis. This means stable matching achieves at least a one fourth approx of optimum in every single round. And using this argument, we can see how the approximation holds for any weight function over the rounds. Now, in every round, we first show the domination lemma by comparing the set of edges selected by optimum in every round that can augment edges selected by stable matching in that same round. In other words, we look at edges selected by optimum that could have been selected by stable matching as well. And since stable matching did not select these edges based on the greedy heuristic underlying the stable matching algorithm, we conclude that stable matching must have been up to something better in expectation. In other words, <clears throat> the set of edges selected by stable matching dominates what optimum selected. We also use a standard charging scheme to bound the set of edges selected by optimum that are adjacent to what stable matching has selected. Before we jump into the proofs, we need to define some notations. Let S less than or equal to T be the set of edges selected by stable matching in round T. We define O less than or equal to T similarly for optimal. We are using the notation less than or equal to since the selection of this set of edges is a result of the information acquired in all rounds up to round T. For example, let's uh, consider round number two in the right-hand figure. So in this figure, edges selected by stable matching in the round two are black and edges selected by optimum in the round are red. You can see edge U1V1 is in it was selected by stable matching in round two. And edge U U2 V1 is in O less than or equal to two since it was selected by optimum in round two. From here on out in the proof, we fix around number T. And for every round, we show that what stable matching selects in round T is at least a one fourth approx of what optimum selects in round T. Let's also define notation for smaller groups of edges. Let SI be successful edges selected by stable matching for the first time in round I. In other words, these are successful pairs that stable matching discovers in round I. So S less than or equal to T is a disjoint union of successful edges that stable matching has found in the first T rounds. In the right-hand figure, you can see U1V1 is in S1 because it was first found in round one. And similarly, U3V3 is in S2. We also define og i to be the subset of edges selected by optimum in round i that were discovered for the, in round t that were discovered for the first time in round i. In addition, we assume these edges are vertex disjoint from what stable matching selected, or in other words, these set of edges can augment what stable matching has selected and still form a valid matching. As you can see in the figure, U4V4 is an edge selected by optimum in round two that can augment the black edges that stable matching has selected. We call it AUG1 since it was first found in round one. Given all these definitions, we can now state our main technical lemma, the domination lemma, which states that the set of SI of successful edges first selected by stable matching in round I 
is at least half the size of the set og i of edges first selected by open round i that are vertex disjoint from s listener equal to t. Let's see this with an example. In order to compare og1 and s1, we look at round one. By definition, edges in og1 were available to be selected by stable matching. Given that stable matching did not select these edges, <clears throat> the greediness of stable matching means it must have selected edges that provide a higher rewarding expectation. In the proof of domination lemma, we must be very careful since optimum and stable matching uncover different information as they progress. And we need to keep track of this information. How do we do this more formally is by defining a sample graph which is the underlying graph of successful edges. Each sample graph induces a history up to each round i, which is the edges that have been selected up to round i and whether they're successful or not. It is now sufficient to show that the expected size of si, given that the underlying sample graph induces history h up to round i minus one, is at least half the size of augmenting edges by opt, conditioned on a more restrictive set of sample graphs. In order to show this, we show the size of SI is at least half <clears throat> the max weight matching that doesn't use any edge in either of the histories H or H prime. And since edges in og i in the right-hand term are a subset of these edges, the proof is complete. We are now ready to finish the proof of theorem three, the one fourth approx. We can decompose edges selected by optimum as augmenting edges and adjacent edges, where augmenting edges can augment what's stable matching selected and still form a valid matching. And adjacent edges are adjacent to an edge selected by stable matching. We bound the size of augmenting edges using the domination lemma and the size of adjacent edges using the charging lemma that we'll define next. If an edge is augmenting, it must be found in one of the first T rounds. And by the domination lemma, we know each og i is at most twice the size of the corresponding SI. On the other hand, the adjacent edges must be adjacent to one of the SJ. And the set of edges in edge that are adjacent to SJ is at most twice the size of SJ, and we can take the sum over all Js. We call this a charging lemma since you can charge every adjacent edge to an edge selected by stable matching. Now, adding these two factors of stable matching together shows that optimum is at most four times stable matching, which completes the proof. Now, let's go back to theorem one that the expected reward of stable matching is a 0.316 approximation of expected reward of optimum. In the paper, we also show a half plus epsilon upper bound on this approximation ratio. Now to do the proof, similar to the proof of one fourth approx, we compared this stable matching and optimum on a round by round basis. For each round T, we form the following factor revealing LP with the objective minimizing the approximation ratio. The inequalities in the LP are given by a charging lemma and a revised version of the refined version of the domination lemma. I'm not going to cover the details of this refined domination lemma, but the general idea is that previously we compared augmenting edges found by optimum to edges found by stable matching in the same round. But we can actually do this comparison for different rounds, as long as we're careful with the information that is revealed to either of the algorithms. Given this factor revealing LP, we found a family of dual feasible solutions with value at least 0.316, which completes the proof. So in today's talk, we compared a decentralized algorithm called stable matching to the optimum online algorithm and showed it achieves a 0.316 approx. The proof relied on a domination lemma and a charging lemma that couples edges selected by optimum with those selected by stable matching. And then we formed the factor revealing LP based on extracted inequalities. We also considered the following natural directions to think about. If you're looking to find matching in teams of up to K agents, we show a similar technique achieves a one over two K approx. We also consider the capacity that setting where agents have a capacity and every matching we select must be a capacitated matching. 
we show a one over 11 epochs for this general setting by decomposing successful opt edges based on a notion of occupancy for each agent. And if we do this analysis more carefully, we can achieve a one over seven epochs in many to one bipartite graphs. To summarize, in today's talk, we considered a model for repeated stochastic matching where compatibility is probabilistic, is realized the first time agents are matched and persist in the future. Such a model has applications in the gig economy, mentorship matching, and kidney exchange. And we showed a decentralized matching process that can approximate the optimum online algorithm. I've given some intuition for the main technical lemma, the domination lemma, which we also use to generalize the results for team matching and capacity graphs. So for the future direction, I'm very excited to investigate algorithms when edges are correlated or when there are communication constraints between edges. Thank you. <laughs>